five signs you're going through a spiritual awakening. Hey guys, my name is Christian. That's what I want to help you guys out with today is when you're first starting that spiritual awakening experience, like whether or not it's happening for you. I feel like if you feel like it's happening for you, it probably is. And I want to go into some tips that happened to me when I first had, had my spiritual awakening. A lot of things that I've been through personally to where I want to actually be able to show you guys what I've been through. And the things that what I did to overcome it and the things what I did to understand it. Because for me, it's still a journey. It's still a journey every single day for me to constantly work through things. It's like the second I unwrap one thing, something else rears its head and shows its face, you know. So it's like it's almost like a never ending process of peeling yourself and revealing new things after you peel something. And that's what I want to help you guys out with. The first thing is becoming aware becoming aware of a lot of the stuff that's in your mind that starts becoming like a lot of stuff that you've kind of been suppressing your whole life like a lot of things that kind of run in the background of your life like a lot of your beliefs and your patterns i find that during the spiritual awakening the first thing you start to do is you start to finally see those for the first time you start to see it like in your mind's eye and that stuff starts to come up and that's why a lot of anxiety and stress and depression can come up because you feel like you're feeling it all at once right away and a big problem for me is that I didn't validate my emotions. I didn't, I didn't think that it was right to feel what I was feeling. And it wasn't until I figured out that I was just not allowing my emotions to be valid. I've always been like a bit of a, like a people pleaser empath to where I kind of devalidated my emotions. And I was always kind of just in this realm of, oh, I don't need to feel that way. Just distract myself. And I hear people say stuff like that all the time to distract yourself. And it never worked for me. And the only thing that really works for me when I'm going through something is to sit there and allow myself to feel it, to sit there and allow these things to come up and allow these things to come into my awareness. And it's like every single day is like, it pushes itself harder and harder and harder. Like it seems like when I'm trying to, when I'm learning a lesson every single day, it pushes harder and harder and harder until I finally get the lesson. So a lot of it is triggers and a lot of it is learning what triggers do. Like that triggers are actually just messengers that they're actually just there to show you what's going on, show you what you're going through. And like when I'm going through something, I'll get that trigger every single day until I finally learn to start taking action. For me, it's creating relationships with people, building better relationships. And so right now, every single day that I don't, it's like I can choose to feel one pain or choose the other. I can choose to feel the pain of staying in the same place that I am, or I can choose the pain of feeling like out of my comfort zone and scared and lately, it's just been so hard for me to jump into that new emotion, you know, and that's kind of what I'm learning every day is every single day I get triggered. So if I see someone that I want to talk to or someone that I want to build a connection with, naturally, the, the patterns that run in the back of my mind, they stop me from doing that. They will make me put my head down, not talk to them, look away, don't give them any eye contact, don't say anything to them. And it's, it's just like a mechanism to avoid getting hurt. And every single day that happens, I get triggered. It's become a trigger for me now. Like seeing what it's like every it's like when I come home and I'll feel like, oh, I feel like crap. I'll let my, I'll sit there and let myself feel it. And I'll sit there and just be okay with it. And then the next day I go into that situation and I get triggered again. And it feels twice as bad. And I get triggered again the next day and it feels three times as bad until I finally decide what it is I need to do. And even then it's still, it's actually having the courage to take that leap. For me, it's learning how to talk to people, learning how to be that. And every day I don't be that. Every day I don't decide to step into that version of me. I feel immense shame and immense pain. So you can learn to look at your triggers and see what they're teaching you. Sometimes they'll give you hard truths. Some of those pills are really hard to swallow, especially like that, especially when you're cognitive. It's like cognitive dissonance. When you have a belief that's so strong that nothing could possibly break it. Sometimes when you get to an age where you get smart enough and you get mature enough through the spiritual awakening process that you start to realize that a lot of those truths need to be absorbed in order for you to finally be, be expand and be the best version of you. For me, it's I got to start being, I got to like talk to people and I have to express myself and I have to express how I'm feeling, you know, and if I don't do that, I'll feel worse and worse every single day. That's actually what I'm currently going through. It's like I'm really, really struggling with this right now. and But that's what I want to help you guys out with. It's not necessarily something that I'm struggling with, but what I've been able to see through my struggle. See that there's a lesson in it that needs to be learned. And, and, that, and through awareness, I was able to realize that awareness through getting triggered over and over and over again. 
you know, and I'm still working through that and I'm still pushing forward, you know, and that's, that's the number one thing. Now, that was just more like a common thing. My spiritual awakening began a couple of years ago and that's when I started to become aware. I just felt called to tell you guys that, what I'm going through personally. And the next thing after becoming aware is you start to feel like you're going crazy a little bit. You'll start to feel like that your whole world's crumbling down and that you can't relate with anybody and that you can't be yourself around the people that you've always been able to be yourself around and people who have always resonated with you no longer do. And the reason for that for me is that I just began to change. You know, spiritual awakening can bring about ego death. It can bring about the death of who you currently were or currently are in order to make room for something new. Because in order to make room for something new, that energy has to be dispelled somehow. And really, I don't think energy actually gets dispelled. It's either it's transmuted because we have all this energy within us, negative, positive, neutral. And it's like we can chew. We're like magicians. We can all, we can actually use our energy that we have to move and put energy into things that we like to do, like our passions. We're like magicians. We can send energy and send flow to things. And sometimes when we get negative patterns and negative beliefs and negative traumas, it can get stored in our body a little bit. And once we, it's like when we learn how to finally engage with it, you know, it's, it's like you learn how to transmute that. Like, how can I better transmute that into my future? It's like you, all this energy has to be, can be used at the same time. Negative, positive, neutral, all that energy that you have within you can be transmuted into something. I find that if I'm only trying, if I'm trying to just be positive when I make a video like this, it doesn't really work out. Like it's, I have to make videos when I'm either feeling negative, positive, or neutral because that way I can use 100% of my energy and I'm not just like living at two thirds, you know, it's, you can't completely disregard the negative energy. I find it's helpful to release it, but it's also helpful to transmute it as you're releasing it to where you can actually put that into your future and put that into your, the rest of the things you want to do in life. Like right now, especially for me, I feel awful about, about what I said earlier, how like becoming aware and being able to create connections with people. It's a very tough, hard emotion to go through. And it's a very tough, painful truth that I have to swallow. And it feels like I'm going crazy because I've, but you know what I can do is I can be thankful. I can be thankful for these things that are coming up. I can be thankful for all the stuff that's happening because it's showing me what I, where I need to go next and what I need to do next to get to where I need to go. You know, it's telling me exactly where I need to go just by giving me this trigger. And meeting that trigger with curiosity can be a hard thing to do, but it takes a little bit of practice. Learning to stop yourself in the moment of that trigger and realize what is it telling you. No matter how tough it is, no matter how tough, tough the, the pill is, it might be it might be giving you a, a belief that's different than one you've always had. So that's maybe that's why you push it away because you have a different belief about things. For me, I have this belief that things will just happened to me naturally and that I don't have to put too much effort into and working into it and every single day I'm proven wrong every single day I'm proven otherwise but it's in and it's like I it's like I'm still trying to learn that lesson and it's like when you get into the heat of the moment that fear that fear comes up and you just start to wonder are you even ready to do this and I want to want to say if you're watching this video you are that you are ready because you're going through a spiritual awakening right now and you're actually able to make you're making room for the future you you're making your, your, I heard a term, you have to clear yourself to be clear. A lot of this stuff has to rise to the surface in order for you to finally be clear. And that's why I get into number three. It kind of pertains a little bit to that is that you no longer run from your beliefs. You no longer run, or you're at least learning to stop running. Or you're learning to, you no longer run and you're learning to stop. Yeah, you're learning to stop running from all these things that hold you down. You know, you might be able to keep running for a little while, but it's at a certain point, some things that will not be able to suppress it any longer and you'll have to face it. You know, and that's a, one of the scariest things to do is facing your fear. Not everyone is ready for that. Not everyone is ready. That's why you can't really judge everybody in this world because not everyone's ready to face the same things that you're facing. Not everyone's ready to face those deep, dark truths about themselves that they need to finally realize. And their own life path is going to put them on the path to doing that, whether it's in this life or the next. At least that's what I believe. I don't want to push any esoteric beliefs on you guys. But number two, or number four, I'm sorry. People will naturally start to drift out of your life. You know, people will naturally start to, you'll start to resonate with people less and less. You'll start to resonate with friends and family and those that have always been close to you. I find that I've, I've nearly completely drifted away from a lot of my like my family, my friends. I still love my family and I love my friends. But at the same time, it's it's like, who do I want to surround my energy with? You know, like, 
who do I want to who do I want to allow into my life to allow into my energy because we all we create energetic connections here's another esoteric belief for you we create energetic connections when we talk to people at least that's what I believe is that we have these energetic connections and you choose to make connections with people that you're talking to the people that you're emotionally involved with you make these connections and you can actually choose which ones to actually evolve and in, involve into your life by just having that awareness for a long time I had friends I had friends back in high school that did a lot of things that I just did just because I was a people pleaser and I wanted to fit in so I'd do a lot of like I would smoke weed with them and stuff like that and like drink and do and hang out after school and just get into like a bunch of shenanigans and I never felt like that was truly me I was just doing it because I wanted to fit in so desperately but now that I've grown up and now that I've changed as a person I've gone through a lot of ego death I've gone through a spiritual awakening now that these these people no longer resonate with me anymore. It doesn't mean I because like I'm such a empath. It's such like a so I it's like I give I give I give. That's what I do. And my the relationships for relationships for me are like currency. So you know, losing a relationship for me is like really really hurtful. And the, but it's all what's more hurtful is trying to cling on to a relationship that's not working. You know, and learning to realize what relationships with people are not working and which, which ones are naturally drifting out of your life. If you trust your intuition, if you're willing to look, without, look within yourself and trust that you have the answers, you'll figure out what you need to do with pertaining that. You'll figure out whether you need to let someone go. You'll, you'll figure that out as, as you listen to yourself. I find that listening to yourself opposed to listening to gurus and teachers, I mean, that stuff can be really, really helpful. But at a, at a certain point, it become a little addictive. Like I was watching that, that stuff too much and I wasn't taking action. You know, that's learning how to take action. It's very tough, but it can be done. It's just through lots of practice and lots of, you know, lots of learning. Learning through failure, especially for me, adversity. It's learning through going out there and not being able to do it and coming back with that failure feeling. Going through that over and over and over again is going to be the thing that pushes me across the edge. It's going to be the thing that finally pushes me into action. I can be grateful for those triggers that I have because if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be so, you know, I wouldn't be so pressed to get better and expand. And the last thing I want to get into is that what you do no longer resonates. Maybe you have a job that you have that you've always had that you start to just a little bit more than dislike. It's more like you just stop resonating with it. It stops becoming like something that fulfills you if it ever did. And that's especially happened for me. I worked factory jobs and retail jobs and I started to just realize that none of this stuff f fulfills me at all I don't feel very good doing it it drains my energy I come home and I'm not able to do anything else because it drained my energy so much that's what I want to share with you guys is that once I learned that I was able to finally and then after you learn that you gotta learn how to step into your own freedom because it's like there's that it's like you know that the job no longer resonates but at the same time it's paying your bills and it's giving you financial security which is a good feeling to have and you know but when you lose that, I've, that's kind of what I've been going through the last, last couple of months. In between jobs, I've lost that. And then losing that safety and security, I was in a, just a world of stress and pain and worry all day long. Just I didn't feel comfortable for a second. But I made it through it only because I was able to trust and, learn, and fight, figure out, try to gravitate towards things that fulfilled me. You know, and this I like to really help people. So for me, it'd be finding a job that actually allows me to help people in the way that fulfills me the most. For you, maybe it might be something completely different. But that for helping people for me was my was like my life purpose. So maybe like finding out what it is you truly love to do and finding your purpose can really help you in a, in a new to find something new that resonates with you. Whether it's a house or a job or a car, anything that might resonate better with you. You know, and it, that's all I wanted to get out today, guys. I really hope you got something from this. Those five signs that you're going through your spiritual awakening or five things that you experience as you're going through your spiritual awakening. I really hope you guys got something from this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.